welcome back to the channel. Today we are diving into something that's super important in the world of artificial intelligence, and that is inductive learning. If you're an application analyst like me, then this is crucial because it's what powers a lot of systems and models you work with every single day. Stick around as we break it down with real world examples and a bit of coding fun along the way. Stay tuned. First, let's quickly talk about what inductive learning actually means. In simple terms, inductive learning is a process where a machine learning model learns patterns and structures from a set of examples. The key idea here is generalization. The model learns to predict or make decisions about new or unseen data based on the patterns it learned from the training data. For example, let's say you want to train a model to recognize different types of fruits based on features like size, color, and shape. After seeing examples of apples, pineapple, and oranges, the model can then identify a new fruit it has never seen before. Now this is happening based on the patterns it learned earlier. Now that's inductive learning in action. Now let's focus on liquid neural network or LNN. This model is designed to capture temporal dynamics, meaning it's great at learning from sequences of data that evolve over time. Now think of trying to predict stock prices or analyze weathers using time series data. Now LNNs are useful for tasks where data changes over time. Like this example, we are going to work with predicting a sine wave. Liquid neural network simulates dynamic systems and it's doing it by updating its hidden states based on previous inputs. Think of it like how liquid flows and evolves constantly changing but still following a certain patterns. LNNs are designed to be more adaptable and efficient and it's allowing them to change their behavior dynamically in response to incoming data. I'll provide a simplified approach to how an LNN could work in Python using a recurrent neural network like structure with dynamic memory updates. Now here is a conceptual Python implementation of an LNN using the PyTorch framework. Now we can start by installing different libraries like Torch, NumPy, Matplot library. Let's jump into the code. Here we are going to use an LNN to predict a simple sine function. The model will learn from the sine wave data and generalize this knowledge to make predictions on unseen points. We are going to use PyTorch for the implementation. Here is a breakdown of how the model works and how the results are produced. The model is designed to capture temporal dynamics similar to how liquid systems, for example, fluid dynamics evolve over time. Now there are a couple of key components. First is the input. This is the weight matrix connecting input to the hidden state. Next is W hidden. That is the weight matrix for the hidden state to the next hidden state captures the liquid dynamics, which is very important. Now W output, that's our weight matrix connecting hidden state to the output. For the activation function, we are going to use TANH, which introduces nonlinearity to our model. Now coming to the forward pass. For each input point, the hidden state is updated based on the previous hidden state and the current input. The output at each time step is calculated from the updated hidden state. The entire sequence of predictions is returned after processing all the inputs. Let's talk about the training. We are going to use a simple sign function as our dataset. The dataset consists of simple sign function that is y equal to sine of x, where x is linearly spaced set of points between 0 and 100, and y is the sign of these points. For the loss function, we are going to use a mean squared error, and that is used to measure the difference between the model's prediction and the true values. We are going to use the Adam optimizer for updating model parameters, which is well suited for training deep neural networks and it kind of adjusts the learning rate during the training. The model is trained over 200 epochs, where for each epoch, the forward pass computes the predicted output. The loss is computed as the difference between the predicted and the actual y values. 
The backward pass computes the gradients and the optimizer updates the weights to reduce the loss. Okay, so here is the magic of inductive learning. As the model trains, it learns the pattern of the sine wave, even though it never explicitly knows the sine function. By seeing few examples, it generalizes the concept of a smooth periodic sine curve and begins to predict values to the unseen inputs. After training, the model is evaluated to see how well it can predict the sine wave. For the plot, we are going to see first is the true function, that is the sine curve, which is shown in the plot as the actual data y equal to sine of x. Now, predicted function is shown as the dashed lines representing the model's output after the training. After 200 epochs, the model is trained and we can evaluate it by plotting the predictions. In this plot, you will see the true sine function and the model's predictions. As training progresses, the loss decreases, meaning the model is getting better at approximating the sine wave. The beauty of inductive learning here is that the LNN isn't memorizing the data points. It's learning the underlying pattern of how the data behaves, which it can be used to predict new data points. In 200 epochs, the results were not that accurate. That's the reason we're increasing the number of epochs to 350. Now here you have allowed the liquid neural network more time to learn the patterns in the data. This is a very common approach in neural networks for more epochs, typically give the model more opportunities to learn, although there is a balance to be stuck to avoid overfitting. Since I saw improvements, it suggests the model needed more training time to fully capture the underlying sign pattern. But do keep an eye on training curve for any signs of overfitting if you decide to go beyond 350 epochs as it might overfit the model. Now let's take this idea of inductive learning and apply it to something more practical. Let's say as a data analyst, you're working with stock market data. Now think we want to predict future stock prices based on the historical prices of a particular stock. Now the stock price fluctuates over time, just like the sine wave. We can use an LNN to learn the temporal dynamics of the stock price movements. Just like how our model learned the sine wave, the LNN would learn from the past stock prices and generalize this knowledge to predict the future prices. This is a perfect example of inductive learning, like learning from the past examples and then generalizing to new and unseen data points. Now, as an analyst, understanding how inductive learning works allows you to you know, leverage these techniques to build different kinds of predictive models in real world scenarios. Whether you're working with sales data, stock trends, or even customer behavior, the principles of inductive learning can be applied to predict future outcomes. Now I'd say thanks for watching. I hope this video helped clarify how inductive learning works and give you a better understanding of liquid neural networks as well. Check out the GitHub link in the description and make sure to explore the deep learning playlist for more insights. Now see you in the next one. Keep exploring, keep experimenting and keep learning.